I had Eric Wargo in here and he was explaining Love to me. Love Eric. Great yeah, guy. yeah, he's great. He has the whole time loops um, theory, yeah. which is amazing. Um, there's, he was explaining to me, and I don't remember it perfectly, but there's like a, a time travel paradox, basically, or a, a paradox to if we go back in time and we affect ourselves, it's going to basically affect them in the future so they can't exist. And that's that. That all ties into the block universe yeah, versus yeah. multi the multiverse. Yeah, Eric is is big time team block universe for sure, and I, and I am too for the most part, only because it is the dominant paradigm to explain time and time travel. And can you for people for the yeah, layman? Yeah, yeah, can absolutely. you explain the basic differences between the block universe and right, the multiverse? Right, sure. So in the block universe model, and uh, I always I always recommend an article. I think uh, her name's Dr. Christy Miller at the University mm -hmm. of Adelaide, maybe. It's in Australia. But she wrote this great, concise article, very layman's terms, that helps explain if people want to look that up. I'll, I'll do a, a, a short one here. The block universe is basically the idea that all moments from the very beginning of the Big Bang to the very last bit of matter leaving this universe and likely going back to start the Big Bang, because I think it's cyclic. Um, all of those moments are structured as sort of static, stationary, and a four-dimensional block. Mm -hmm. So if you move between those, you're not changing anything. You're just connecting different parts of that block. It's also called landscape time occasionally because it's easier for us to factor out one dimension. So think of all of time and all of the moments throughout history, past, present, and future, as being on a static sheet. You can jump to another part within that, but it's not going to affect anything about where you came from. What you're doing if you go into the past is basically just um, interacting in the way you always had. And there's not going to be a change because when you get back, you find that you had just done what you were always going to do. So there's no paradox in the block universe because there's no change. Okay. You're interjecting yourself. You're doing the things. I think in, in her article, yeah, she's talking about you're walking around, you're petting donkeys and, you know, eating lunch and interacting with people, but you're not changing anything. You're just doing what you'd always done in that period. It just took you to go back to do it. Another thing that helps people sometimes is to think about meeting yourself. So if you go back, say you're 40 years old, you go back to when you were 10, you get out of this disc-shaped time machine and you go up and say, hey, I'm you from the future. Oh, cool. Nice to meet you. Got any advice? Don't date Rose. She was bad for you. Okay. Dale, don't Dale. don't race today, Dale. <laughs> don't race today, Dale. What like, was that from? I'd go back and tell Dale Earnhardt not to, get, oh, not, yeah, not to race right, that day. Right, right, right. Yeah, but see, that's the thing is you can't change anything in the block universe. And, and one of the saddest things for me when I started doing this and writing about it and talking publicly in 2018 and 19, I never thought, in my life, I would have people writing me, asking me how to save their their dead child or their lost father, relative or something. It was tremendously sad. Like that was not on my radar at all. I, I thought I'd lose my job and people would hate me for other things related to this, but I never thought I would have to like try to help people who are suffering tremendous loss from something they wanted to change. Unfortunately, in the block universe, you can't change those things. Those moments are structured that way. So everything's predetermined. Nothing can be changed. Yeah, here's a There's good way no of looking at. Here, I don't want to. I don't want to say that. Why? But that is one of because the hate mail, man. That's they okay. come after me. They come after me hard when nah, I just say delete that. it. You don't have to read it. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's, there. That's one of the implications of this. Some people see that as an issue. I don't. I actually kind of like it. I call really? It, I call it feel will because it feels like we have free will. Who cares if we do or we don't? Right. And there's all these studies, like the Libet study, showing we don't even know what we're doing until after we do it. We don't, we don't have conscious awareness of our actions until milliseconds after it actually happens. Another thing, this is the big hang-up for people, and I think this helps folks wrap their head around the block universe, is that if you look to the past, you can see all these things that might have happened in your life, but there's just one timeline. There's one world line for you and everybody else. We look to the future, and we say, oh, there's all these infinite possibilities. Anything could happen. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking back from 100 years in that future, they see the one line. They see that only one thing actually happened. Yes. All of those possibilities converged into one world line for the universe. And that's essentially what this is. It's looking back at the end of the universe and seeing that one line that played out in this universe. There was one history. You can move around within it. It's not changing anything. It's not like you come back and 
it rains donuts and, and cats are dogs and dogs are cats. Right. It's that everything is still the same. You just went and did what you're going to do. Versus the multiverse. Many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics is one of the, the more dominant models here. Where if you go back into the past, it creates this quantum decoherence, and now you have two different timelines. It bifurcates the timeline. And there's issues with the law of conservation of mass. How can you just double uh, the, this huge universe and all of the mass within it into two different things? There's other right. issues too, but that's yes. one of the big ones. Um, so in that model, you have different timelines. And I've often said that I, th I think the interdimensional theory and the intertemporal theory, this extra tempestral, are essentially one and the same. But basically, this interdimensional one of the versions focuses more on jumping timelines. Yes. Whereas this extra tempestral model, because it is the most dominant paradigm that we understand in philosophy and physics, mm -hmm. looks at it in the context of the Novikov self consistency principle that all things remain the same. There is no change. You're just interacting with the block universe in all of these different ways. It's not creating new timelines, it's not creating change. There is no paradox. So I mostly focused on that because it's what we know. Mm -hmm. Is it wrong? We'll find out in the future. I mm -hmm. don't know. But I can only base the things I write about on our current knowledge of physics and philosophy. Right. I think a lot of people speculate that the singularity is going to happen in like the 2030s, 2040s. Do people ever talk about when we might be able to figure out time travel or actually experiment with time travel? Well, what's interesting is that if time travel exists, we have time travel at all points in the past that that can reach. So there really is no point where time travel becomes new, essentially. Because think about it. Like, we say we don't have time travel yet, but it exists 100 years in our future. Yeah. Someone from 100 years in our future can come back and pick us up now and take us to whatever point in the past they want to. We didn't have it now, but because it's accessible to the people in the future that do, it's also accessible to us. It's kind of the same thing as that super technological singularity where all of these things and these capabilities become mm -hmm. available to us at whatever point they decide to let us know. And that may be a part of what this disclosure movement is too, is shifting us toward that because finally we're not the the humans trying to have a conversation with ants where the humans trying to have a conversation with more advanced humans. So do you think the go like the these government programs where they have these crashed vehicles or these reverse engineering programs, these are time machines that I they do. have? And yeah. And I I've, I've, think about it too. Like um, if they are, say, say this time machine crashed in Roswell. Let's just use the Roswell example. Okay. It's People see this as a paradox, too, even though it's also not paradoxical in a block universe. But if you go back in time and crash this thing outside the desert of Roswell in 1947, those people didn't create that thing. It crashed into there. But they're reverse engineering it. They're figuring out how to use it and how to make it and how to fly it and how it manipulates space-time. And eventually, you develop that same machine that goes back and crashes in 1947, starts it over, goes back. It's this infinite time loop of self-consistent events that are connected across two different points in the block universe. But where the paradox comes from, it's called the bootstrap paradox, is because people think there has to be an origin point. There has to be a creator. They say, who created it? It must be a paradox. It doesn't matter. That thing's always existed in those bookended, connected points in space-time. The people in the past didn't create it because it crashed into their time. People in the future didn't create it because it took the reverse engineering of the people who had it initially to create that thing. So it's like, I, I always say it's like looking for a corner on a rounded ball. There is no corner because it's not a block. It's a ball. It doesn't matter. It's just always existed. But it, it violates our fragile sensibilities about linear time yeah. and cause and effect. One of the first things we do in kindergarten is we're given these little things. we got to cut out the paper and then put them in order. We're right. taught from a very young age, brainwashed almost, that linear time is all there is. Mm -hmm. Not the case when you have backward time travel capabilities. 